hello there beautiful people welcome back to the channel so uh, a bit of a depressing news story today we gotta cover we gotta look into the uh, beautiful utopia the utopia that uh, our liberal media keeps telling us about this beautiful beautiful utopia of the Muslim world you know Pakistan a land known for being uh, tolerant and good and all kinds of good things anyways so the lady here, the lady, I'm pretty sure you can't see her face. I can't see her face either. That's the traditional garb for women in Pakistan. The lady, her name is Asia Bibi. Now, if you're wondering, Bibi is not uh, her surname. Bibi is uh, the Hindi or the Urdu word for wife. Because, you know, women empowerment is uh, so top-notch in uh, South Asian countries, predominantly in the Muslim-majority countries, that women generally... Uh, their last names, a lot of the times, they stay unknown. Society re generally refers to them as BB or wife, you know, because uh, that's what uh, women empowerment looks like. Anywho, so I'm going to tell you her count of the story. See, she has been on death row since 2010. Yes, she's been on death row for uh, five years now. So if you guys want to know why she's on death row this is this is where the story gets really interesting the crime that she has committed will blow your minds so she works in a farm so this is her side of the story I can't say that you know I can't verify that but as someone who has a lot of experience in that part of the world I find her story to be extremely plausible so this is her side of the story she works in a farm she gets water for her farm workers and uh, her farm workers would not drink the water that she bought. You might be wondering, what sanitary or hygiene-based reasons do they have? Well, the reasons are fairly simple. The lady, she is Christian. And uh, Pakistan, as you know, is not Christian majority. It is Muslim majority. And uh, as peaceful as they are, they would not drink water that is collected by a Christian because uh, the hygiene standards in the Islamic faith, I don't know much about it, but the Islamic interpretation that these people take is that if a Christian person collects water, that somehow compromises the hygiene integrity of the water. So they wouldn't drink it. And it gets into a bit of a disagreement, you know. And at some point in time, she talks about her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and makes some comments juxtaposing Jesus Christ and the teachings of Christianity with regards to Islam. Now, as you know, Muslims are generally the beacon of tolerance. But on this particular occasion, they got offended. And then they brought into something that uh, Muslim-majority countries really love digging at with uh, to religious minorities. It's called blasphemy laws. Blasphemy laws, I'm pretty sure you most of you guys are aware, it's when you can say something that is insulting to the religion or to the prophet of Islam and you could face the death penalty. The word insult is subjectively applied and interpreted by law. So a few days later she had blasphemy allegations and she is now facing death row. Well since 2010 she is facing death row. She has five children and uh, if you're wondering what the legal defense in such a country looks like for people that have uh, faced blasphemy law, well, the Washington Times report that uh, this Islamic group, Tahriki Labbaik, says that if the judges don't hang her, the judges will face problems. Now, Tahriki Labbaik is a uh, Islamic radical group. Now, some of you guys might be thinking of this in U.S. terms because I understand most of you guys are in the Western world and you might go like, well, this must be some uh, Islamic version of the Westboro Baptist Church. Um, no, not really. The Westboro Baptist Church has, like, what, 12 members? Maybe 10? They're not a threat to anyone. Unless you are a 70-year-old lady or a street cat, you have no reason to fear the Westboro Baptist Well. Tariq el Baik is a radical Islamic group and uh, they are politically involved and they have a fair amount of support because, you know, things are, uh, things are interesting in the Islamic utopias. Anyways, they say the judges will face problems. I will leave links to this story and you guys should uh, go ahead and check it out. Her lawyer, who is defending her, has his pub uh, private information leaked to the public. You can sort of understand uh, 
what the implication of that is. Uh, I generally try to bring in liberal sources as much as possible to keep things partisan, but with stories like these, they're generally not covered by liberal sources for uh, obvious reasons, I guess. So you guys read the story in detail. It is it is one of the more heartbreaking stories that uh, you'll see. And uh, now, what's important for Western media? Well, before 2014, when I was living in that part of the world, I'm not saying that the Western world should go in and interfere and every headache in other parts of the world should be something that sh should be burdened on Western taxpayers. I'm not aiming for that particular angle. But generally when things like this happen, come out in liberal media trying to defend or apologize for these behaviors, that is literally the worst thing you can do. That is as close as you can do to digging a knife in their back without actually doing it. I mean, metaphorically speaking, of course. Anyways, you guys, uh, that's the story. Uh, I'm sure I'm glossing over a lot of details. I'm giving you guys the TLDR version. Links in the description below. I'll talk to you guys soon, and uh, take care.